okay for what's okay. Oh. And there on the path, a lone person did walk out of the wood. And he did have the look of determination. And the fair maiden did know it was Sir Dragon. Dra Dragon. Dragon. Sir Dragon. That was, uh, that's from my book. That's how I wanted to open things up today, because folks were... We're shifting gears a little bit, okay? I'll be honest with you. We've been getting uh, responses to our work so far, and that, uh, you know, statistically we could be doing better, so I'm kind of putting all my straws in different cups, okay? That's, uh, that's how an economist might put it, okay? Uh, so I'm here in the dungeon today with, uh, with I'm going to be kind of uh, coming towards you at a different angle, okay? Uh, I used to write these fantasy medieval books. I read a passage to you from my book, uh, Dragon's Lair's Quests. Ah, yeah, d thank you, Dean. Perfect. That's uh, uh, one that... Um, was a, the big hit. Uh, there were several books after this one, um, but this was the one that, uh, you know, couldn't walk around town without uh, seeing one of these. And, uh, you know, it was at the, just about every place you could see a book. Any place you'd find a book, that that book was there. So, Dragon Dragon's Lair's Quest, what is it about? Who, how, where, where did it come from in my mind? I'll answer those questions, okay? Uh, Sir Dragon, uh, kind of just like based off my uh, my childhood. Uh, my dad said, "Quit dragging around. You're always dragging, dragging. You're you're dragging," and uh, that was my inspira inspiration for that. Is uh, they, they uh, oh, here comes Dragon. Here comes the Dragon. He's always dragging. That was the big joke, huh? Uh, you know. So I just decided to take that nickname and kind of to put myself in uh, fantasy novels. And uh, there's a whole nother chapter of my personal life story that goes into live action role playing in the forest and doing these things. And I really went crazy with it and started a relationship as a result with a woman. Um, but that is another chapter for another show. Uh, for now, we're just going to stick to what these fantasy novels were, what I did, where it went. By the way, folks, Happy New Year. Okay, 2021. Big deal. Big deal to me. Big deal to you. A long time ago from 1978 when I released my first fantasy novel books through Dragon's Lair in there. And uh, look at that. Oh, perfect. <laughs> okay, who do I see here? Violet? Leslie? Peggy? Perfect. Wow, girls, you look great. They were nervous about being on the net tonight because uh, they said every time they're on the net, they look big. They look big in a great way, if uh, if I do say so myself. And we had a blast last night. All the guys went home except for me. And uh, it was great. I brought in the new year with the girls. And uh, we tried to stay six feet away from each other and all that good stuff. But, you know, it's difficult. You know, we didn't play Twister, okay? <laughs> so relax. But uh, we did have a fun time when uh, I took everyone's temperature. And um, I took everyone's temperature in the dungeon today. So we're in a very safe dungeon today. So the courtesy of me, um, folks, uh, I'm sorry that I sidetracked and started talking about the new year's party and Leslie and, uh, all of, uh, everybody. And, uh, can you show that picture one more time, Dean? I'm sorry. I didn't get a good look at it. My gosh, I could get on my little screen here and I can figure out how to uh, Dean showed me how to work this thing so if I blast you or something happens I can see the dang chat room okay see myself in the darn thing at least wow this looks great Dean Dean does uh is doing great work here and uh 
and uh, I'm just gonna check in the chat room real quick. How we doing, chat room? Say something to me, huh? I'm checking your pulse, chat room. Nothing. Uh... And we also got the phone lines up. Dean, you want to show them the phone number there? And I'm gonna, and we are gonna talk about the picture here to my side here. I just wanna, we're just gonna take a breather and just make sure that the public has access to my dungeon. Hi. <laughs> Is this an old joke? I fit in there. <laughs> All right, folks. The dungeon. You're in Grobe's dungeon today. Talking a little bit. Uh, oh, hold on a second. We had a, uh, a, uh, a user named Dinosaur Milk asking, Grobe, what have you been up to since your last book? <sighs> A lot of forest time, a lot of time in the woods, a lot of time with uh, my padded foam sword, which I called. Oh, oh, it looks like we got a phone call. Dean, the way that you jumped up, you made me jump. But um, uh, it was uh, it was an it was an amazing. Uh, it was me, my woman, and my sword. I'm not gonna bring up the woman that I was with in the forest during my uh, live action role playing games days when I actually became my character. Oh, uh, yes, uh, I'm sorry. Thank you, Dean. I appreciate that. Uh, go ahead, caller. What's uh, what's your question? Great. Bags of milk in my basement. I don't, uh, well, uh, if you tuned into the last episode, my, my, I'm having basement issues right now. So if I wanted to have bagged milk in there, I couldn't really fit in there. You got bagged milk in your basement? I do. Well, how Tons. much? Like six bags of it. Six? I don't know if, like, That's not one much. bag is a liter or it's, yeah, like, what's the measurement? We, we okay. We didn't get his question. We just... I heard his question. Oh, okay. Yeah, we, 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 Okay, so just to make sure everyone knows, this caller wants to know if I had a many if I had any milk bags in my basement here in the dungeon. My answer is no, but the callers tell me he has. Caller, tell me if I'm right. You have six bags. Six, how six how, bags? Six They're bags. Multiple. How big are the how big are the bags? How much milk can they? Can't have? tell if it's a liter or like a. Liter's good. Gotta be at least a liter. Liter's good. I think I personally could fit a lot more milk in my basement. Uh, of course, it was flooded out recently, and we're still working on that. But, um, caller, uh, where from up north are you? From? Uh, you know, uh, just north of the border, like um, where the beavers come from. Hmm. Hopefully, you're not drinking their milk. Hope it's coming from the cows. It actually tastes like almonds. Oh, fantastic! That sounds great. The, yeah, just now, milk. wait, uh, I don't know if you heard what I said before you said that, but I suggested that you might be drinking beaver milk. You're not saying that tastes like almonds. I, ah. huh. I, Call, I don't gonna, know if you can see what's uh, going on in the studio here, but Dean just threw something up and it just about scared the daylights out of me. Do you have possums where you're from? Moccasins? No, I did not say moccasins. I said possums. Oh God, no, no, thank you, no. You're on li you're live, so you gotta perk your ears up. You gotta listen when I'm saying something. You had to, you really had to take this seriously. I can't take my eyes off your mustache, though. Is there a problem with it? No. I hope I'm not coming off it's, as it's a opposite. mean person. It's I just want. Enticing. Okay. Uh, look, I appreciate <laughs> the call from the north, where the beaver milk comes you. from. You got six liters in your basement. Yeah. I feel like we know a lot about your caller, and uh, I really appreciate the questions that you uh, you brought forth today, and you gave me a lot to think about. Also, um, you don't know how to make cheese, do you? Or some kind of butter product? Because I feel like it might be easier to deal with it that way. Uh, I have never made, I'll be honest, I never made, I've never made cheese. Apparently it involves a cloth. You wouldn't recommend like a bed sheet, would you? To make you're asking how to how I would make the cheese if I would use the bed sheet. I, uh, <laughs> Brian, I feel like I'm not even sure if um if you if you uh if if you know if you're talking to the right guy. I'm not. Uh, I'm sorry, I don't have much for you in the, in, the, in any of these angles. But 
I'm telling you the truth. I'm thinking about keeping milk in my basement. We're going to go ahead and uh, say goodbye to that caller. That was very interesting. Wow. I wasn't expecting that at all. That, that was a huge success. Thank you for calling in from the north. We're going to keep the, the wheels rolling on the live stream. Talking. Uh, feel free to call anytime you want to. Uh, thanks for staying with us folks here once in a while. I just don't want to be rude and do certain things in front of the camera in front of you. So I just kind of, uh, any kind of contortion I might make with my face. I want to have that happening under the table so no one can, uh, see what's going on with that. Going back to Sir Dragon's Lair, uh, uh, that wasn't the end of the story, so to speak. I wrote a lot of books. Uh, they did find some success. I ran into a little controversy when I decided to make a video game uh, from the books. Sir Dragon's Quest. Uh, and the, the game happened to... Uh, it, it, there's a really controversial part in the game where you approach a goblin by a gate. Goblin gate. Okay, uh, in order to get past the Goblin Gate, you have to feed your horse. Thank you, Dean. I appreciate you pulling this up. You got to feed the horse that you're on to the Goblin at the gate. Okay, I'm sorry. Uh, when, um, when you feed enough horses to the Goblin, obviously, he lets you go through but if you don't feed him enough horses he doesn't really he says the same thing over to you and over and over again um i can i okay i i i see where the frustration is coming from if you don't realize first of all if this thing eats horses or not okay not everyone that i realize that if you haven't read the books you don't know that the goblins main die in the book it, they eat goblins okay there's whole cities that are eaten by whole cities okay of horses uh where goblins eat the horse cities okay so it's it's just concrete globe malumbo mythology within the books it's a serious big part of the books so a lot of kids when they bought the uh the game they didn't realize that they were going to be feeding their uh, a lot of horses to goblins and they you load the game in and there uh there's about 50 around you that spawn in right off the bat um which is a lot of processing power in those days uh, but we pulled it off and um people were frustrated with it um i think that uh dean was kind enough to show you the cover of it once you get past the goblin gate, it actually go, turns into a really fun game where you're, um, thank you. Perfect. Okay. Look, you'll see there on the screen there. I'm, I'm trying to catch up with my screen. Perfect. Okay. Uh, so he, this is my character, Sir Dragon, uh, about how I looked like in my teenage years to tell you the truth with the hair and whatnot. I tried to, uh, capture my more rebellious years you know of uh cruising around town and um smelled awful like cigarettes back then every jacket i would wear my mother would know it was my jacket because of the uh it would just reek of uh the worst type of uh we got something in the jet uh, okay chat uh grove have your books been cathartic for you to write uh are these metaphors the biggest metaphor actually in the book uh, is an older man without any eyebrows. If you uh, to pull up the cover of the book, I could explain it better. I'd love to go back to this though and explain that a little bit. But if you're in my chat room, I'm going to, I'm going to be holding you like this tight. Okay. Um, so dragon's quest layers, you're going to see uh, the old man with the mustache. Um, the eyebrows that are on there, they get taken off. About halfway into the book it's a very dramatic part that you don't see coming uh and you know it's it's part of why it's a page turner as to why that he loses them 
uh, has to do with a lot of sorcery. Um, but basically, my character is there to help him. And it's based off of an uncle I had that I spent a lot of time with. Uh, and, uh, well, you put it close to me, it's like he's here. I start talking about him, and it's like I could smell his cologne in the room and just see his smile. He was, his smile was uh, the biggest expression on his face because without the eyebrows, there was a sometimes muted from half his face up. Um, but uh, what was those just those curled up pieces of flesh there that were there without the hair? He made up for a lot. But anyways, in the book, he turns evil. And in, I guess in real life, he kind of turned into a jerk, too. So I wrote the books that way. And uh, I have him as the bad guy. It was very cathartic to write about him. He was my roommate for a long time. And so if, um, he was he liked Celtic music a lot and uh, played it very loudly. And uh, I have that as part of the book as well. Makes the horses very upset when the, 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 the villain plays his music. Uh, and, uh, you know, it's uh, that's a great question from the chat room, folks. That's why we have a chat room in our dungeon. So that uh, when people, I know that a lot of people notice when you tuned in, wow, talk about a change in decor, huh? And uh, yeah, you'd be right. It's a big change in decor. We're not, the new thing wasn't a big hit with the crowd. We're going to be mixing it up a little bit more, talking about maybe video games and doing retro game reviews. That's what I told Dean that I kind of wanted to take the show and maybe be a little bit more fantasy based and I could talk about either characters in my book a little bit more and flesh them out like I just did uh, kind of explain flesh out uh, parts about horse city that people didn't understand and the vehicles that they ride in um, because the horses in the book they're ultra intelligent uh, and one of them has a horn coming out of its head um, which I called a hornicorn um, and a lot of people said that I stole that idea from something. I didn't. A hornicorn is something that I came up with. It's a very original Grobo Lumbo idea. So back off. And uh, it was a big hit with kids. Kids love hornicorns. And I know that because I would put them on my T-shirts that I would sell when I worked at uh, Virginia Beach uh, for a moment. Uh, I think Dean showed a picture. Oh, bingo. Yep, Garfield. Yep. Uh, I don't know if you remember Garfield, who used to be a big hit with the kids. I used to put him on a lot of t-shirts. And man, I was a huge hit. That was the 80s for me, pretty much. After I got out of the woods. After the Dragon Lair uh, mess. Uh, this, is my, this, was, this was my abode. That smiling cat face every morning. Uh, but me drawing it. So um, that was a big deal. And I would draw hornicorns on there sometimes, too. They were very popular with the kids. Single horn, right above the nose, coming out, hornicorn. Uh, so, okay. Uh, why don't we go, ho uh, go ahead and uh, show them. Uh, I almost said go a horn. <laughs> horn me up the, the, uh, the phone number here. If you don't mind, Dean. Bingo. See this W? It's all part of the big, bigger sentence that I'd like to get you to know. It says, call now. Let it be the W and a, and a win. Call now and uh, talk to me, and we'll uh, talk about some more subjects. I got plenty more to talk about, though, uh, with the Dragon Lairs video game. Uh, I, I want to talk a little bit. Can we get a little bit closer to my face, though, real quick? Did you do bingo? If you're thinking about going home and trying this game out. Hello. Oh, uh, we got a phone call. Okay. What was that? Go ahead again. I'm sorry. Grandma? Grandma, are you calling from upstairs again? I gave you a frosty. I gave you a frosty. And you told me you wouldn't call and ask for things on the line again. What? Anchovies? I'm not coming back up there. I got at least 20 more minutes to do down here.
folks, my God, you'll have to excuse my grandmother. She's, she's thriving in one way, but in another, she just uh, is not respectable of my terms, my conditions for happiness that I have. Folks, I have terms and conditions for happiness. Take me seriously. If you're thinking about going home, download the video game. Know that it's realistic, okay? See it. Some realistic things. It's a real life simulation. Medieval world. This horse is giddy. Feel it. <sighs> All right, now that I got that out of the way, could you bring up that screen with the. Folks, have you noticed the chat room down here? We got the chat room text, so if you want to be famous for a moment, uh, we have 30 subscribers. Oh, we have a chat room. Hi, Grobe. Um, talk a little uh, politics and tell us how great we're going, going to be with Biden and Harris. Well, let me tell you, there's a reason why I'm in this dungeon, <laughs> and it's for talking about things that I shouldn't about lizard people. That's what I think about what you asked about. But I'm not going to say much more than that. We're going to cool our jets a little bit. I'm going to be in the dungeon for a moment. I'm going to come out like a phoenix. And maybe I'll talk about the spicy stuff again. But I know what that comment means. That's a comment of appreciation. What I really stand for. And I'm an American freedom fighter. Everybody knows that. And no, I didn't scam you into an idea about coming into my show, thinking it's gonna be one thing and it's another, what? Zoom into my face again. Get in my face. I would never. This is a serious business I'm in, okay? So the politics thing, if it doesn't work out, we're gonna go another way, okay? But inside, you, the people out there, you know who I am, where I come from. Anyways, I want to talk more about the, the, the video game. I'm sorry. Uh, huh. The brain pills. The brain pills really get your blood going, let me tell you. It's not just good for your brain. It's good for your whole circulatory system. You're going to be flushing a lot of toxins out when you first take the circulatory, uh, the, the, the circulatory draining pills. That is my pills. Brain pills. We also have another set of pills. I don't know if Dean has that graphic handy or not. Business hips. That's all right. It was kind of a mess anyways. I don't know if you heard about what happened last weekend with it. A few people tried it out on New Year's. And um, let's just say that uh, when you take business hips, it might not be the best thing for your digestive system at the moment. Bingo. Thank you, Dean. I appreciate it. We're, get, we're still figuring it out. I'm going to come out with a 2.0. And I think that uh, from there, everyone's going to really have a good time with it. And uh, <laughs> you're going to dance again. Okay? Take it from the smile. You'll dance again. You're dancing again. You're going to dance. <sighs> okay, I feel good about this one so far. I feel like uh, we really hit some good topics. I haven't gotten into the video game stuff yet, which is really going to be the big juicy part of the show big juice bag the big milk bag in the basement all right this was a if uh oh thank you dean appreciate that sometimes it gets dark in the dungeon for a second but you know my lights come back on all the rats scurry away and we're still here so dean you got that video game picture here i want to talk a little bit more about um really uh itching to talk about this here I'm gonna get my little screen set up and I talk a little bit more about the, the way we set this guy up here. Okay, so in the simulator, you're Sir Dragon, which is uh, basically me at a young age. Uh, he's running at, he's a hunter with a skill level of 10, which is impressive. That means his, his bow staff level is gonna be through the roof. When you hit level 10, a bow staff is, uh, let's say if you see Sir Dragon, you don't wanna meet his bow staff because you're gonna lose all your coins 
and all the king's cherries that you've collected. You collect 30 king's cherries, you're going to get an extra life, okay? Uh, also based on my childhood where a uh, big part of my diet was sneaking out of the cherry tree farm. And, uh, and let's just, uh, cherry tree me, <laughs> there's not a lot of honesty in that story when it comes to me. I did a lot of terrible things there. But uh, Mage 14, sweet. Uh, that means that the magic that he uses, uh, if you need help opening a jar, that's the guy that you're going to want to talk to. And Mage 14 easily is going to, uh, has the, uh, some fantastic fantasy powers. Uh, cave crystals. Mages love cave crystals in my books. So when uh, you come across a cage crystal and a cave crystal in the game, that's going to encapsulate you for a second. Then it's going to recharge your juice meter, which uh, should be at 120% most of the time anyways when you're made. That was Dean, I'm sorry. And then Bull Rat 5. Uh, Bull Rat 5 is just stamina. That's just uh, Legend of Bull Rat. Uh, my books all has to do with stamina. So uh, when you talk about Bull Rat, you talk about, um, you know, how fast can you pull, how fast can a pull cart? Is it's bull rat. It's about five bull rats. I got five bull rats under the, the hood. SUV that I used to have uh, with an old girlfriend that I had in my LARPing days. And uh, boy, that sucker ran about 15 bull rats, I'd say. Mean bull rats. <laughs> the kind that bite. So, uh, so uh, basically, talking a little bit more about the screen there, you can see that this was. The screen cap that I was uh, able to get from the internet because um, because uh, this is the part where a lot of people have criticized a lot of the video game people. Uh, the goblin has eaten your horse. Please bring more horses to get past the gate. This is about the time that people would turn the game off. Uh, not a big hit with young girls who like horses. A game where you're pretty much feeding horses to this goblin like this goblin's making glue or something or doing something making uh making making a horse hoof necklace or uh something like that i don't know how's the chat room doing anytime i, t I try to explain horses in my uh my books it's just uh you know it's uh it's its own type of spice that's for sure um so besides that folks i mean uh we're, we're hitting at about a half hour here, folks, and um, I think it's time to go a little bit closer to my face. Let me tell you a little bit about the dungeon that I'm in, okay? The nights I spend here, the aromas I smell, the day I sleep on, okay? The sanctuary. This is the place that I go to think. This is where I got my idea, the best of my ideas. Sometimes I just put that dungeon right on my head. Feel good about myself. That's how I'm free. That's how I become, that's how I become closer to being a free man. I heard the ding ding in my ears like uh, somebody called and hung up. Don't feel like you're interrupting me if I'm kind of getting into my dungeon mode here. But folks, I wanted to tell you a little bit more about my new home. I'm doing this. It's my way of just telling myself that I need to get back to my center, focus on me, focus on my ideas, what I'm coming up with, and spring back forward again. And wow, 30 subscribers, folks. Look at us. I'm out here sweating for you. Sweating for your likes, okay? So if you're here, why don't you look over this direction at that like button, or it could be over here. Oh. Hello, Caller. sweetie. Thank you for calling Would you in. play Shock Mania with me? Is it Grandma again? What'd you say, Grandma? Sean, you want to play Shock Mania with me? I have no idea what's going on with uh, this call right here. Uh, you can always tell when grandma's hungry because she's going to be picking up the phone and she's been driving the Grubhub people crazy lately. Uh, 
because I'm, uh, you know, there's always a lot of questions as to how you get to her part of the house. Um, the door to her uh, apartment is under some newspapers and some old cardboard, and it's kind of like a, you'd swear it was a window, but it's uh, it's a door, and you can fit through there easy. Um, especially if you're taking uh, business tips. And uh, Dean is putting my chat on blast here. I love it. Thank you, Dean. Chat's a big part of the show. You gotta polish it every once in a while. So that's nice and shiny. And uh, treat the people good in the chat. Always talk to them. Let them know that they're doing great. Um, oh, well, folks, if, uh, if there's politics in the chat, you know, live with it, all right? If it's bugging you, well, Maybe go outside and get some fresh air or something. Let the cool air get on your skin and just uh, help it cool your jets. Okay. I'm cooling off in a dungeon right now and I love it. Uh, Dean, we got those sound effects going in the background too. Fantastic. I made sure that uh, we really wanted to give everyone a dungeon feel. There's pro I think that there's people that uh, they're watching in VR right now. And uh, if they're watching, should be surround sound. Should be surrounded right now with dungeon sound. Uh, Dungeon Sounds, another one of uh, my, it's a side project of, uh, Dean and I have a side project, Dungeon Sounds, where uh, we really focus on just making the, the dirtiest dungeon sounds that you can find on the internet. And uh, it's huge in parts of Europe. It's a big thing. It's a big part of our income, Dean and I. Uh, in the old days, we had an angel player site dedicated that's really where we got our boost to fame you can download the wave files of our dungeon sounds and um you know that turned into new metal eventually uh in my opinion so uh family values tour 1998 um that was pretty much dean and i uh, planted that seed um but we weren't in control what it turned into you know big money grab really which uh you know i didn't really have much to do with that Anyways, folks, I said before that we might hit, take a little break here. I might take a little couple minutes to take a break, but keep on listening. And, um, you know, keep on having a good time. Keep on hanging out in Grove's Dungeon. And uh, I know it smells mildewy in here, but it's for the message, folks. It's for the, the bigger the bigger message. And uh, I'm delivering it to you. And uh, if you're listening to me, great, on the podcast. We're going to get that going eventually. Uh, you know, if it's not a podcast thing, if it's more of a visual thing, it'll be like our new zooming cam. Try to really give it the full effect for you there. Taking a break with you in a moment. Listen And comes the break. There's one Dean is ready uh, for the break button. He finds it. The break button.
And Sir Dragon did a and Sir Dragon did approach the gate, the goblin the gate. And the goblin did say to him, Feed me thirty horses so that you may pass my gate. Sir Dragon looked confidently forward and in truth said, Open the gate, goblin. I will not feed you any of these horses. They are free. Let them go. That was a passage from my book. We missed a call from Mary Galante. I hope I said your last name right. Uh, we'll go ahead and put that phone number on there. While we we're on break there, we got that phone call. And uh, we feel real bad about missing it. We take care of you if you call us. And uh, we want you to know that that phone number is connected right now. The dungeon, we got electricity in the dungeon for a night, which is nice because uh, it means the space heater's working that I got by my feet. And uh, not going to be a cold night in the castle, at least for half the night. Uh, and uh, hopefully my sleeping bag will keep me nice and cozy. Yep. I'm hearing dings. That could mean one or two things. Could mean that I got... Uh, Hello, you're connected with Grobo Malumbo. You're coming in at me. Uh, you're coming in full speed. Ten bull rats. What's on your mind? Fuck a lot. You like my book? The I first like one. The story. The, yeah, the uh, Dragon's Lair's Quest. Are you? Are you gonna keep reading the story? Would you like me to keep reading the story? I'd like to hear more of the story. Please. Okay, fantastic. Okay. Uh, <clears throat> Call her. It's good. Okay. It's really uh, good. Should I just? Uh, would you prefer if I just flip to a page, or did you have a? a, a was it your birthday and you wanted a, a page in specific? Red. I want to hear. I want to. I want to hear. I want to hear seven paragraphs. And seven paragraphs. Things. Okay. Mm -hmm. Coming at you. Here we go. I want to hear it. Okay, I hope you have your volume up in your headphones because I'm going to say it now. I'm going to be reading it. Here we go. I'm hope ready. Your, hope your Bluetooth headphones are charged up. Okay, hope that They're you charged. got high... They're charged. Okay, here we go. Ready. Sir Dragon did say unto the man who asked, There are but three sheep in the garden, and they... Wait, 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 wait. Why well, I didn't get very scary. far. This is gonna get scary though. Is this gonna get scary? Is it gonna get scary? We didn't get to we haven't gotten to the goblin eating the horse part yet, but let me tell you, this is uh <sighs> Hope you're not going to bed anytime soon. Oh gosh, no, no. Keep going, keep going. You want keep me to keep going? going? There are but three sheep in this garden, good sir, and that is my wager for the fair maiden's hand. And the innkeeper did say, I do require at least eight sheeps for this fair maiden. And just so any nobody's confused about what's being talked about here, the uh, the, the the fair maiden was the ship that sailed the the horse ship that the horses ride on. Horse captain, uh, there's a whole, uh, yeah. I don't know if you're a fan of the series or not, but if you like horses, they uh, a lot of them don't survive in it. Spoiler alert, but uh, there are a lot of great horse characters in the book. Oh, uh, why do you kill them? Why do I kick? Why do you kill them? <laughs> why? I'm sorry, I need a break. This is emotional. Ah, it's when I cry, it stings my, my nose hairs. Ugh. It's like a bad sneeze almost when I start crying. Ugh. I don't cry tears. I, uh, I have moisture in my nose that uh, affects uh, my nose hairs when I get sad. And uh, when I was first born, it very, it very much confused the doctors. Um, because they didn't understand why I was uh, why I wasn't crying. I was just sneezing over and over again. Uh, confused them. I don't even have a chat room window up, folks. I'm sorry. I usually like to take uh, care of my chat room people here. Let me uh, 
I'll get it up. We're in the second second wind here. Anyone in the chat talking? Dean, am I missing anything here? No, we're good. Uh, which corner is the sadness one? Uh, well, I think that uh, that was a, a reference to uh, a question about my books. Uh, the, uh, that's one of the big controversial parts about it is uh, there's a big part with the mythology and the seven corners uh, of emotions and uh, talk about how uh, me dealing with my emotions the sad corner is the one with the uh, the donkey uh, the sad donkey so uh, I hope that answers your question if you're uh, so you're probably looking at uh, the book that came out that is basically the maps and the artwork of my books and you're looking at the, the all the corners you want to know which one is a representation sad one my emotional compass that's it for the character sir dragon's character uh folks uh sir dragon is a very complex character an onion of a character if you'd say with many layers um and uh one of the ways that i organized that was by developing that system okay it's a big part um so if uh but i don't want to go i don't want to talk anymore uh, I'd rather talk about something else. Uh, if we're going to be talking about the books, I'd like to talk about uh, a little bit more about Horse Tropulus and what that was. The horses are capable of incredible things in my books. Uh, they chew gum, for one, um, which is um, a big part of my vision of the CG movie. Is that uh, one of the horses in the book has a bubblegum factory. That gives uh, the gum is the same ingredients as my brain pills. The same ingredients as my brain pills. And, uh, boy, let me tell you, I don't know if you've ever jump started a car, but this is like doing that to your brain. Okay. It's going to give you from zero bull rats to 20. I'm sorry. That's what most people call horsepower. I call bull rat energy okay um and we're gonna go a lot into talking about bull rat what he was in the book uh the mythology of what he was how i got the idea to write him um the blueprints for the puppet for the movie uh bull rat very technical uh seven men go inside of it operate the bull rat bull rats are uh you'd think that they were from the dinosaur era they're so big as big as your high school gymnasium so seven men is uh not a lot for what for. that's a small budget price control the bull rat puppet i don't have pictures of that right now there's a lot of things i gotta draw up still it is a huge part of the book where sir dragon uh has the face off with the, I'm, I'm being told that I have a question in the chat room. Um, <laughs> folks, I'll be honest, in the dungeon, we don't get the best reception. I my, The walls here are made out of rocks that are, uh, they're gigantic. Predictions of um, 2021 what uh tim del vecchio asked okay i'll do that i think that goes with the show's theme and we got the camera nice and zoomed in on my face which is really great for my predictions do we have the music going too i saw we had a compliment about the music is there a way we could could we do uh predictions of 2021 and have the music in the background would that be possible dean the medieval music that was playing during the break that be possible where uh, Dean's going to fire this up and we're going to make this. If you're in the chat room and you're chatting with me, I'm going to treat you real good. If you're going to call in, I'm going to treat you real good. Tim Delvaccio, we're treating you really good. We're going to give you the full Grove experience and I'm going to give you layers of predictions with music in the background. And Dean is right. Dean is uh, behind all the TVs right now, moving a bunch of wires. 
and uh, there's a lot of power cords back there, so he has to take his shoes off and, uh, so he can slip his feet up. Really dig around. How's it going, Dean? Okay, we're in. We got the music going? Good. You got the music's going? It's going. 2021 predictions with Grobe Palumbo. In 2021, my brain pills will take the pharmacy market by storm and they will be more popular and I will get more subscriptions as a result of people's obsession with being more intelligent than usual because of the things that I make in my bedroom, my basement. Uh, we have more, um, I was really getting into that there. Zombie aliens, okay. Well, that's a reach. <laughs> I'll give you lizard people all day long, in fact. If we were gonna go back to the old format for a second, I don't, uh, that's not territory I really wanna go into, but I had some ideas planned. We're talking about uh, me seeing the birth of a lizard person coming into the world. I know I but briefly mentioned that in the previous stream, but that is a sight to behold. That was like seeing a meerkat, uh, meerkat uh, made out of radishes uh, soaking wet coming out of a some kind of black mold in your ceiling your basement and uh, I wouldn't recommend it it's uh that's where I saw the birth of the lizard baby that I saw was in a basement and not in this dungeon but in the dungeon I was considering for this one about living in it and um I saw a lizard baby nest in the corner of the room. And that's a corner of sadness on its own. Are you still there, Ryan? Ellen, are you out there? Did you like how I did that? I treat my chat room well. If you're in my my dungeon, if you're in my chat room dungeon, you're not being tortured. You're being made happy. Um we have a prediction of artificial children in the chat room. And uh, if I could uh, have a serious talk about that for a moment, I think that's a viable subject for the show. And uh, just to tell you where I might be going after this, okay? I'm not going to stop at medieval fantasy books. The big, the big thing that we got going on next, or the big thing I have going on next, is science fiction books. And uh, artificial children are going to be part of that. Okay? Because let me ask you some questions, okay, about how you see the future. There's a big part of my science fiction has to deal with how you might see the future. Okay, and let me tell you, you look around now, the way that kids are on tablets, it's like they're being programmed already, okay? <laughs> so it's already yeah, happening, it's not really science fiction, is it? In my books, it goes a step further, okay? The kids, they're picking up these tablets, and they find a guy, a YouTube guy, who's the best YouTube guy they've ever seen in their life, and they can't stop watching him. And soon, a man is able to create an army of them and re replace their minds with 5G technology. So uh, that's uh, that's going to be coming at, on the, the bookshelves next. And uh, if the medieval look doesn't suit us very well and if people aren't into my retro game reviews, this could easily transition into something more science fiction related and we could talk more about artificial children then it could be a big pot topic of a show like that the chat room is thriving tonight with uh all kinds of great questions seem all kinds of good um you know alien lizard children uh too sad sad enough to make you sneeze or at least make me sneeze three six times after i saw it because when i get emotional i sneeze um, so the second I saw the alien baby coming out of its cocoon, my, uh, and what may have been the dungeon I was living in, 
I sneezed. Um, I predict uh, Tim Delvaccio says I pre I predict aliens will arrive. The invasion will fail because aliens will die of COVID. <laughs> and maybe uh, you know take that a step further. You know uh, maybe uh, the aliens will the the, the aliens won't uh, they won't stay six feet apart from each other and those UFOs is uh those are kind of small small ships that's something that they didn't plan for really i bet when they came over here so you know my audience is great they have uh, vivid imaginations and i'll tell you why it's because they uh are book readers they read my books there's a whole series of them we were able to find one uh, but i guarantee you if you're a person who likes to go to the thrift stores maybe shop around You'll probably find different parts in there and uh hopefully the you, you'll you'll find the good stuff so um i want to talk to you a little bit more about my brain pills folks okay i know that uh look at that boy what was it taken 15 years ago my chin just looks chiseled there and that was uh i had a strict workout routine then that uh i mean i don't keep up with that now what I do now in the dungeon, this isn't the best air to exercise in, unfortunately, and uh, my treadmill wouldn't fit my room, so, right. Um, but, uh, you know, folks, that's okay. The rent is cheap. Um, I think this place is haunted. Dean thinks so, too. But uh, we're making some of the best stuff on our SoundCloud that we've ever made. As far as the dungeon music that we make, the dungeon sound effects, it's not even music, it's just about five second sound blurbs. Really? Oh, Dean tells me not to call it music, don't call it music. It's a little, little sound things. Uh, we have predictions of 2021 still coming in here. I predict Prince Harry and Meghan will replace Biden and Harris. That's interesting uh and uh the usa will become a monarchy well folks you might want to get your own dungeon at that point um and let me tell you the market's rough right now you might be finding some lizard babies coming out of some corners some sad corners out there i'm Grimble lumbo and i'm here to tell you about the sad corners of life okay and how to get out of them okay and uh picking the right dungeon's important and if you want to stay happy, the truth about dungeons, the truth about marriage, pick the right dungeon. Okay. Okay. Uh, that being said, uh, you know, uh, talking about my LARPing days and uh, role playing in the forest and uh, my days out there with the foam sword, living by the sword. And, um, things I saw. Do you have any pictures of anyone LARPing, Dean? Nope. I'm kind of pulling that out of a bag all of a sudden, but folks, live action role playing is a thing that I used to do. And uh, I used to do it at the park, not far from my house. I guess you could call it a park. Really, it's just a part in the woods that uh, there's a clearing there and, uh, and some, uh, some, some pipes that are going to who knows what maybe a sewage plant or something I, I live by. I don't know if that's all part of the same system, but uh, that's where we would meet up. And that was the inspiration for Goblin Gate, to tell you the truth, was uh, those pipes. Uh, but anyways, I'm, get, I'm getting sort of lost in uh, thought there. Uh, LARPing did influence my books in a big way. Um, a lot of the, the different sword fights that I was in. Oh, great. Dean's got some... Uh, great stuff here just show you what i'm talking about i always appreciate dean's help with the graphics i lost it again i lost the screen though hold on sorry this happens over and over again folks and you're all so patient oh look at this gallant gentleman perfect the triangle hat i love it love his bow what kind of bone do you think that's made out of Bull rat bone, bull rat bone bow. That's what I would call that. 
doesn't have to be necessarily made of that it just looks like it is so if you're reenacting um if you i don't know no that's i guess that's not what you would call it but if you're participating in um live playing my stories that's what that could be and maybe everyone should take a look at their lives and say how can i make this more like a game and i'll tell you how that's possible you go out there you buy my PC game that I made 20, 30 years ago. Feed that goblin all the horses you could fit into his mouth. Okay? Get past that gate. Get back to me in the comment section and tell me what you think. That's perfect. Wow. Every time I see that, it's like a brand new thing. Some people like a Mario or a Sonic. I like a goblin at a gate wanting to eat a horse. So thanks for tuning in, folks. I think this is a good place to cut it. Get you free. Six o'clock. Love you. Hey, get out of this dungeon any day now. But first, we gotta see how many likes and subscribers this gets us. See how much pain and suffering my pain and suffering means to you. Was that a good time to?